I'm Lynn Smiley Nesbitt from First United Methodist Church in Dothan, and, and I'm here to talk to you about the way to begin a devotional time. Don't worry if you don't know a thing, that's okay because you'll know something when we finish talking together. First, you'll need to set a time to do that. And like most things, it's helpful if you set a time to do it every day. Now, when I was in junior high school, my Sunday school teacher was careful to talk to us about a devotional time, but he insisted it had to be first thing in the morning. Well, that's not a very good time for me. That's at my high energy point in my day. I'm a morning person and my mind is racing and I've got things to do. And it's not that I don't have time to remember God, I do. But it's not a time for me to be still and have a longer time with God. So you do what works for you. If somebody tells you there's only one way, let me just suggest that they are mistaken, even if they're well-meaning. You find a way that works for you. I have friends who have prayer chairs. Now the chair is not special. What the chair is used for is special. It's the chair where they go and sit every day to pray. That's a really good idea. It doesn't mean that's all you can use the chair for, but it helps them when they walk to that chair to know it's time for prayer and that helps get their mind ready for that. Other people like to sit at the kitchen table. It's perfectly okay to have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or a glass of iced tea beside you. This is a conversation with God. And when I'm having a conversation with good friends, I often have something to drink in my hand. Some of us really don't sit still very well. It's also perfectly fine to do this while you walk or while you run. The key is to find what works for you. Now, I'm going to speak during most of this time as if you did this totally by yourself. But I know some of you are parents of young or uh, elementary school age or high school children and you'll want to model this for them as well as to teach them because it's so much easier if someone teaches you as you go along. So I'll be also working to talk about how we can do these things with others. We may not be with others the whole time, but how we can help our children to do these as well because none of these things are inaccessible to children. Age just does not, does not matter for that right now. Um, some of the ways that I have taught children and youth to pray are also great ways to pray for adults. One is the five-fingered prayer. If you hold your hand like this, your thumb is closest to you. So we use the thumb to remind us to pray for those closest to us, those of our dearest friends, those of our family members then this is the finger used for instruction. So we use our pointer finger to remember to pray for teachers and for healers and for pastors. The tallest finger helps us to remember to pray for our leaders, our leaders in the groups that we're in, our leaders in government, people who lead because their ideas are so helpful to all of society that folks listen to them. Any kind of leader, the tall, the tall finger. This finger, what we usually call our ring finger, is our weakest finger. We don't think of it that way, but it's true. It just doesn't have the strength of our other fingers. So we use this finger to remember to pray for those who are weakest or in need. Those who are sick, those who are hungry, those who are lonely, those who are mourning. You can fill in that blank however you'd like. This finger's last, but it's still important. This finger is where we pray for ourselves. We ask God for the things that we need most. Now, I'm gonna mention that. Some folks have told me, well, you need to be specific in your prayers. You, you need to ask for specific things. I, I think asking for specific things is fine. And I think a blanket prayer like God bless everybody may not be specific enough, but you don't have to be that specific. You can say, Lord, I know that Susan is very sad. I don't know why. 
I don't know what would help her, but Lord, I lift her to your love. That That's perfectly specific enough. Now, do not worry about remembering everything I'm saying. We're gonna have links on our website that will have um, reminders of these things and things that if you would like to, you could print and have and refer to again. The other way that I teach folks to pray, and especially I do this with my confirmation class, and it is the acts of prayer, A-C-T-S. A is adoration, worship of God, praising God. Now, it is real easy to get that mixed up with Thanksgiving. We're not thanking God for things except for who God is. Lord, we love you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, you're a ruler of all creation. Lord, you are the sky above us and the ground under us, and without you, we are nothing. That's adoration. The second is confession, the C. I remind my confirmation class that confession really means to tell the truth. Now, it may be a bad truth or a sad truth, but to tell the truth. So we may confess our sins, but we also may confess our doubts, confess our fear, confess our weakness. It is to tell God the truth about who we are, how we feel, what we've done, be utterly truthful with God. And we can only be utterly truthful with those we utterly trust. And we can trust God. So A, C, adoration, confession. T is thanksgiving, telling God, thank you. Telling God, thank you. And that's fairly easy to understand, but I would suggest that you try one day to find things to tell God thank you about. I'll tell you what I'm thankful for. I am so thankful for hot water. When I'm in the shower and that warm water goes over my body, it feels so good. To tell God, thank you for what a good long drink of water is like after I've been out walking in the neighborhood. Thank you for the softness of my dog's fur. Uh, thank you for the way the carpet feels under my feet. Thank you that God made Kaneka sausage, or at least God taught somebody else how to do it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, to have times to say thank you. And then S is for supplication, which means asking. Now, there are usually two kinds of supplication we think about. One is called intercession, and that's when we pray for other people. But we also can pray for ourselves. What do we need? What do the people around us need? And it's perfectly okay to ask God to teach you to pray. That's a lovely, lovely thing to do. So we've got two ways to help guide us in prayer that have steps to them. One is the five-fingered prayer. Those closest, those who instruct and heal, those who lead, those weakest, and ourself. And then Acts, A-C-T-S, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. There are still more ways to pray. In fact, I'm barely going to, to skim the surface of what there is. And you can see that in these five-fingered prayers and in the acts of prayer, it's easy to lead any child who's able to talk. Um, it's easy to lead that. Here, here's another one. It's called examining the day. Now, the real fancy word for it is examine, but that's exactly what it means, examining the day. And that's where we come to the end of the day and we look back on the day in the presence of God. From the time we got up in the morning to the time that we are right now. And we say, we ask ourselves several questions. We ask ourselves, where have I seen God at work in the world today? Now, for me, it's helpful to have all these questions in the back of my mind and go through the day sequentially but you do it however you want to. So I'm going to look and I'm going to see where did I see God at work today? I might have seen God at work when I saw this gorgeous blue sky that we happen to have today. And I also might have seen God at work when I watched an act of kindness. Someone reaching out in love to someone else in a way that they didn't have to, 
but they were prompted by God and enabled by God and strengthened by God. I'm also going to say, where in the day did I feel afraid? Where in the day did I feel inadequate? Where in the day that I need God, but forgot to call for God? I'll also do, it's called an examination of conscience, which is, how have I served God and heard God today? And how have I turned away from God today? Perhaps not even deliberately, perhaps turned away from God and didn't realize until I examined the day that I had turned away from God. So it is to go through my day in the presence of God and with that voice of honesty within me because I am with a God who is truth. Where have I seen God at work? Where did I miss God at work? But now I've, I see where God was working. Where, where did I honor God and where did I forget God? Where was I afraid? Where was I confident? Where was I learning? Where was I teaching? Where was I with other people? How did I interact with the people that crossed my path today? That is an examination uh, of the day or an examine, E-X-A-M-E-N. Now, again, all of these things will be available for us to look down in a way that is written on our website. Then there's also something called holy reading. H-O-L-Y, reading. The fancy name for that is Lectio Divina. But all Lectio Divina means is holy reading. And that's where we read the Bible. There are all kinds of ways to read the Bible. I, I took a lot of Bible in college and in seminary, and we would study it, and we would look at the historical context. We would look at the language it was written in. That is very worthwhile study. And later on, in a few weeks, we'll be looking at how to study the Bible. That that is a wonderful thing to do. But right now we're talking about prayer. So how do we read the Bible as a way of prayer? And, and there's several steps to that. Now, I'm going to suggest, if you're not already quite familiar with this, first that you pick a fairly brief passage. That, that's true even if you're familiar with it. But I would suggest starting with some of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John or with the Psalms, I, I think those are more accessible to people who are learning how to do this. And it's got four steps. The first thing we do is to read it. We're not in a hurry. It's a short passage. And we listen with the ears of our heart. We're not trying to figure out the tense of a verb. We're not trying to figure out historically anything. If you happen to know that, that'll come to your subconscious, but we're listening with the ears of the heart and almost inevitably, a little phrase or word will stand out to us. And the next step is to repeat that, to let that soak down into our consciousness, to repeat that that one word or one phrase, and then the next is to respond. We may feel a prayer of praise, a prayer of thanksgiving, um, a, a prayer of petition, asking for something, a prayer of confession, if, if that is touched on something that, that we now realize we, we've gone the wrong way on, and to offer that prayer to God, and then to continue with repeating that phrase within our minds and our hearts, although repeating it out loud is fine too. Then the last is to rest, just to let that soak in for us. That's holy reading, Lectio Divina, and it is a way of praying. Sometimes we can just have free flowing prayers. Just pray about whatever comes to mind. For example, you might sit in a rocking chair on your back porch, perhaps at the end of a long day or perhaps at the beginning of the day, early in the day, and just notice the birds. Thank you, Lord, for the birds. Notice something else, some piece of trash that's blown into the yard and, and begin to pray about your task for the day. Just whatever comes to mind, just a free flowing prayer. Those are awfully good prayers to have while we're walking. Another prayer practice that I've learned many people 
um, do is when you hear a siren, be that a police car, um, the rescue squad, a fire engine, a, a siren always means that there's some kind of difficulty, some kind of emergency. So when we hear a siren, to begin to pray for whoever is in need and then in pray for whoever is responding to that need. We don't have to know who they are. We can begin to pray. Yet another kind of prayer is a breath prayer. It's especially helpful when we are very anxious or tense or when we get into a situation that is kind of thrown at us. And it is a prayer that we can do while we're doing something else. And that is to pray with our breath. Now the classic one is um, Lord God, Son of God, Lord God, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. So it's the name of God and then asking God. So we might breathe in, Lord Jesus Christ, breathe out, have mercy on me, a sinner, to let every breath be a prayer. We can do that also if we are very, very concerned about someone. If someone we know is quite ill or in a great deal of danger, I'm gonna name the person Mary just randomly. I can say, Lord Jesus Christ, please be with Mary. Lord Jesus Christ, please be with Mary, letting my breath out. I hope that these have been helpful. I assure you that this is not the end of what can be done. This is just the beginning. I hope that you've looked at them for if you're a parent of a child living at home, what you can do at home. You can examine the day around a supper table. And I, I know those are, are rare moments, but you can examine the day when you're in the car. I realize that we cannot shoehorn in one more thing into our schedule, but we end up driving an awful lot of places. And we can have conversations with our children while we're in the car. Where did you see God at work today? And if that's a little bit abstract, where did you see kindness today? Where did you see someone encourage someone else today? Let's give God thanks for that. Where did you see an unexpected blessing today? Let's give God thanks for that. Where were you afraid today? Let's ask God help for that. I would also let you know that any of the pastors at this church would be glad to talk with you more about prayer. If, if I've stirred up your interest, if you want to know more, or if you have questions, something wasn't clear, I hope you'll call the church, 334-793-3555. Or if you will email us, if you'll go on our website, which is F U M c dothan f-u-m-c-d-o-t-h-a-n dot org you'll find our email addresses and you'll find all kinds of opportunities for you we welcome anybody to take part and if you are not physically near dothan that's okay we have a lot of opportunities that are online as well the lord god be with us all amen mm -hmm.